Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a sneaky little AEW Dynamite review. I am Aaron Nix, host of the Wrestle Plug podcast. So, AEW Dynamite this week is opening with John Moxley versus Ten. <sighs> this match, John Moxley versus Ten, was a four. <laughs> I just don't care. Uh, obviously, I'm not expecting Ten to get in a huge amount of offense. He was fine. He was all right. There was nothing wrong with it. It was just boring. And John Moxley breaks uh, Ten's arm because Brody Lee won't hand over the belt. Now, fair enough to AEW Dynamite because as soon as Brody Lee came out with the belt and stood there and ran his mouth, I thought, why hasn't Moxley just attacked more of a chair and taking his belt back? Because the story is, I want my fucking belt back. Oh, okay, well, it's right there, mate. But, you know, whatever is what it is. Uh, but then, to be fair to Moxley, on the mic afterwards, he says, yeah, do you know what? I'm not chasing you around the fucking arena like an idiot after my belt. It's like, do you know what? Fair play, mate. That covered all angles, and I appreciate that. So, you know, uh, I think Moxley versus Brody Lee this Saturday at Double or Nothing is going to be fantastic. The problem is, hasn't had enough build. And AEW... They're kind of building a reputation for spunking a lot of high-profile matches way too quickly. Now, they've got plenty of content. Obviously, they've got so much more going forward. But hopefully, once the pandemic dies down and we can get back to a sense of normality, they're just going to ease up a little bit, let things breathe a little bit. Because right now, it's almost like, you know, everyone's saying, oh, it's you know it's a marathon, not a sprint. Well, it seems like NXT and AEW are sprinting like crazy because every week... They've got takeover or pay-per-view worthy matches going on. And, you know, case in point, um, with the main event, obviously, with Sammy Guevara versus Matt Hardy, which I'll talk about in a moment. But, yeah, i I got to be honest. I thought this Dynamite was okay. You know, it was nothing really offending me. I thought Wardlow slipping on the ramp was amusing, although I wouldn't laugh in his face because he murdered me. Uh, I also like the theory that actually Wardlow didn't slip. The steel and the earth underneath him moved under his sheer force. Uh, very Chuck Norris-esque, that joke. I appreciate that. Twitter can take the credit for that bad boy. But yeah, I MJF face Marco Stunt. I am not a huge fan of Marco Stunt. I'm a huge fan of MJF, however. Love his work, love his promos. Thought his in-ring character was great. And for all of you sweaty marks out there who keep banging on about, oh, MJF, oh, he's, all he does is just swear and stuff like that. He doesn't do it well. He just got the best match I've ever seen out of Marco Stunt. You know, Marco Stunt's very flippy. He's obviously a very good athlete, but he's also about fucking three foot tall. And... <sighs> Do you know what? Max Mini never went over Kane, so why should Marco Stunt go over anybody? And people moan all the time. Marco Stunt had more than enough offense on this, on this, um, in this match, and he shouldn't have. And it really frustrated me that people were out there saying, "Oh, Marco Stunt should have got more offense." And we're talking about he's tiny compared to everyone, you know, including MJF, who's not a humongous man by any means, although he is a world class athlete, and people don't realize that because they get so uh, blown away by the character but I, I thought the match was good um, I actually think Marco Stunt, Marco Stunt excuse me, got more offense in than he should have You know, that's just my opinion I'm not Jim Cornette by any means but I also don't think that someone like Marco Stunt should be getting much offense in whatsoever and you know I, I thought this match was probably the best thing I've seen out of Marco Stunt but yeah, it's little mistakes that bug me, I'm a huge AEW fan okay, I love all wrestling, I love WWE, I love AEW, I like NJPW so I'm not one of these people who's an apologist for any, so if you're going to come out on our social media and say, you oh, fuck's sake, you're just an apologist for WWE, an apologist for AEW nah, we don't really give a shit about any of that nonsense, really don't, and I certainly don't, I think that the little mistakes are what let AEW Dynamite down, case in point you know, at the end of that match, uh, Jungle Boy jumps in, Wardlow just kind of casually walks off, Jungle Boy just doesn't even pay attention to him, even though he's in the ring way too quickly, just little things don't work for me. Uh, Phoenix versus Orange Cassidy, again, it's a world-class wrestler against an excellent wrestler and athlete who is presented as a bit of a joke, so Orange Cassidy's gimmick is that he doesn't give a shit, so you knew that it was going to annoy the wrestling purist when he just very casually stepped out of the way of Ray Phoenix's flying kick. <sighs> then the match, you know, it, well, the best one in the world, it pissed me off. The first 
Five minutes of this match is dedicated to Ray Phoenix looking like a complete fucking tool. We are talking about one of the best wrestlers in the world, if not of all time, at least in terms of Lucha Libre. He is incredible, Ray Phoenix. I've never seen an athlete like him. And AEW has some amazing athletes. And he is so, so special. And I'm watching him get bumped around by a guy with his hands in his pockets. And when you have this mentality and attitude that AEW presents, which is, oh, you know, we're all about realism. Yeah, we're all about wins and losses. We want to make ours feel real. We've got MMA guys. We've got real fighters. But you've also got a guy with his hands in his pockets who un undoubtedly is a world-class wrestler orange cassidy's a phenomenal wrestler but i don't want to see him with his fucking hands in his pockets when he's wrestling the fun of the gimmick is when he does it outside of the ring for me and when he gets in the ring and he makes someone you know that for me lowers everybody and you lose a lot of your audience by doing dumb shit like that because let's be honest if you're a casual fan and you tune into dino and you see a guy in jeans with his hands in his pockets you immediately think well that looks so fake it looks ridiculous because it does. Whether people like it or not, and I love how people get so tetchy about their work, but the reality is it does. Come on, you can't tell me that that doesn't look like fake bullshit. Oh, here's Ray Phoenix. Legitimately a world-class athlete. Oh, don't worry about it, because, you know, guy and his guy with his hands in his pockets can deal with him quite nicely. It's lazy. It's lazy booking, and it's very frustrating as well, because ultimately it doesn't need to be done. It doesn't. Orange Cassidy can go out there and have a world-class match. And he can also keep the gimmick, but get in the ring and wrestle well. Um, right before that, I was utterly thrilled that I had the opportunity, however, to see Pac on my television again. Because for my money, he's the best wrestler in the world. Amazing promo, world-class athlete, looks like an absolute monster superstar. Just an awesome, awesome, very cool guy. There's something about Pac, whenever he's on your screen, he feels like a megastar, and I think once they have the opportunity to fly him back over, because obviously all this self-isolation bullshit, he is going to be on fire, and he's going to add so much more credibility to this show. It's the same reason when Jericho's on my screen, when John Moxley's on my screen, um, you know, when Kenny Omega's on your screen, these are the big guys, these are the marquee talents, and they really match things up. But on the plus side, hey, at least uh, Orange Cassidy didn't win. You know, he lost again, and I think that's right, you know. Uh, he's going to be in that ladder match, which is going to be ridiculously awesome. There was a bit of a spot fest at the end. Didn't really care much for Ray Phoenix doing that insane uh, tope, springboard tope, and then none of the guys even attempted to get underneath him. I thought, well, that's fucking bullshit. And then poor Colt Cabana had a pretty similar problem with his wonderful acai moon soul. Never seen Colt Cabana do one of them before, so fair enough. Um, women's tag team match was good, but nothing to write home about. Uh, Hikaru Shida and Chris Statlander getting a win and you know well not getting a win Nyla Rose gets a win and they obviously put one over on her by putting her through a table uh, it's alright it's okay you know uh, you definitely got for my money the best two women's wrestlers going after each other this weekend I think Nyla Rose is an amazing champion I think she's a great promo but we don't really get to see much of that because the women get about Oh, I don't know, shall we say about 10% of the show if they're very, very lucky. So, you know, it is what it is. But, I mean, you know, it's fine. I just wish they would put a lot more effort into hyping up the women on the main product and give them not just wrestling time, but proper promo time, TV time. I've said this before, it still needs it, and I think it's going to be an excellent match, but ultimately i'm not emotionally invested in it because they just haven't given me enough of an opportunity to be invested in it um so yeah it is what it is but double or nothing looks pretty sick i must give a nod to arn anderson and jake roberts and that amazing promo i thought that was fucking cool that little promo segment talk about a masterclass. um absolutely phenomenal so you have this incredible you know, sort of feeling of two legends sitting opposite each other, threatening each other, looking for a fight. Jake Roberts versus Arn Anderson. Tell you what, mate, it was money 30 years ago, and it could be money again if they do it right. Um, hopefully they won't wrestle, though, because I just don't think guys like that need to be doing anything. And it was nice enough to see him out there. I thought it was cool. Obviously, Arn Anderson representing Cody and um, Lance Archer being represented by... Jake Roberts going into this Saturday at Double or Nothing. Uh, a bit disappointing, obviously, to be seeing Cody or Archer, but I like this segment, and 
if you're an aspiring wrestler or you're one of the guys who works in AEW, you should have all been sitting down and really taking notice because when it comes down to it, you have these two world-class promos. And I personally think that these guys should have more say and more creative control on what goes on in AEW Dynamite because I'm sure they could really add a lot of value not only in terms of on-screen characters but also you know in creative and things like that but at the same time it's pretty obvious that that's probably what they're going for so can't really complain from that standpoint um main event sammy guevara versus matt hardy good match sammy guevara made matt hardy look fantastic physical great athleticism loved it really enjoyed it actually i I honestly thought it was going to be a bit meh i thought that matt hardy was going to ground sammy guevara too much and it was going to be a very tedious headlocky affair but no credit to matt hardy at his age you know for a guy who's been wrestling 27 years to still have that level of performance in him is awesome i cannot judge that whatsoever so fair play to him and i really love the brawl afterwards as well they've <laughs> they've really mastered the art of the old wcw nitro brawl really enjoyed that we got the return of the young bucks and hangman page as well uh, kenny omega obviously was being abused <laughs> pretty much tied up to the post and getting the baseball bat matt hardy comes down to save him the young bucks appear it, it was cool hangman page running what seemed like the length of the american football field i'm not his biggest fan i have to say but i do enjoy him in fits and spurts there are times when i really fucking pop for him and this was one of those uh, i like the way he just walked off as well fuck it uh, but it's good to see those guys because i feel like the roster really needs it and obviously going into this saturday you've got that big match uh, not quite the blood and guts match we were promised, obviously, because of what happened. And I understand that entirely while that's not happening yet. I think we'll get that down the line. But instead, we got a stadium stampede. And we got a real taste of what we can expect as all of these guys brawling, doing crazy stunts and shit. Great fun. Loved it. Really good ending to a pretty average show, I'd say. It was a good watch. It wasn't a terrible watch by any means. But, you know, for the go home show, I felt that the last kind of 10 minutes of this show really were pretty much the only thing you really needed to watch you know everything else was eh. it is what it is and also sean spears and dustin rose just being thrown in there last minute very disappointing that guys like sean spears again still not getting a fair crack at all it you want to know why guys like sean spears aren't as over as they should be even though i'm personally a huge fan it's because you gave him one fucking segment to build his match with dustin rose a match like that could genuinely have really really special consequences for the roster it could really set a lot of people on notice and especially fans they could really pay attention to something like that and instead it's oh here's sean spears with his news update great that's whatever fucking pointless but overall good really enjoyed it not too much to pick at but it didn't really grab me by the throat like past episodes have particularly the one that had the street fight a couple of weeks ago so good fun Great entertainment, obviously, two hours that I always love dedicating to watch. And I'm looking forward to see how NXT um, works in comparison, because obviously I like to watch NXT straight afterwards. So we'll have a look at that, and we'll see what that does. But let us know what you thought about AEW Dynamite. There is a comment section for a reason. And also, if you know anybody who's going to love this content who isn't already on board with the WrestleBlog, get them to like, comment, and subscribe to us. It'd be really awesome to have new fans, new people interacting. We love all the people already interacting. So thank you so much if you've checked in. You know, amazing people like WrestleNalia and uh, Jerry Manuel. Uh, Carl Wilkinson, so many people dropping in and checking out our content and I'm very, very grateful for that and I'm really looking forward to meeting more and more people and making new friends as we go along. So make sure that you like, comment and subscribe. Make sure you share the content if you can. Check out WrestlePlug at WrestlePlug on all social media and of course WrestlePlug.com as well for some fresh articles and some interesting content via that website too. From myself, Aaron Nix, I'll catch you very soon for more nonsense from the WrestlePlug.